Guitar nerds, what's up? It's Pete Thorne. I'm in Malvern, UK today at the Malvern Theater. Uh, I'm out on the Classic Rock Show 2023 tour. And I thought I'd just give you a little rundown on my rig and show you what I've been using, uh, what I brought over for this tour. I've totally switched it up uh, this year. I've done two of these tours before in 2020 and 2022. And uh, I'm using a two amp rig on this tour. I brought some different guitars. I've got some different effects going. So I've been filming stuff in venues over the last week, uh, Liverpool and Birmingham and all over the place in the UK. So I thought I'd just show you what I'm using. So let's get to it. Yeah, I lent this guitar to Pete. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is Roger's guitar. No, this is a uh, this is a Sir Aura. Uh, this is one of the prototypes uh, before they built the hundred that were sold, and uh, it's just a gorgeous guitar. So it's so nice of the Sir folks to let, let me use this out on the road. This isn't mine; it belongs to the company. But um, you know, this is essentially our favorite guitar from Kalamazoo, uh, perfected. Um, you'll notice it's got a straighter string pull and uh, a little bit less angle yeah, on the you. headstock, so less uh, sort of pressure on the nut, and that all adds up to it stays in tune perfect. And John did the frets on every single aura made. I say there was only a few prototypes made and then a hundred of these productions, so there's maybe 105 of them total. And he did the frets on every single one personally and all the crowning and leveling and you know, all that stuff. So it's a gorgeous guitar. It's got thorn buckers in it, and uh, you might notice that the controls are reversed from a guitar of this style. But this is actually the bridge tone on this guitar, and it's in the perfect spot to do like volume swells and stuff with your pinky on the bridge pickup. So that's a neat addition. Just a really, really cool guitar. My garnet red uh, sort of signature. Um, this is kind of my main guitar as of late for the last six months or so. I love this thing. It does everything and does it well. So I get to play it a lot during the night. Got a ton of different stuff. And it just stays in tune and sounds awesome. I gotta polish it up, but there it is. This is my Leo Scala Underdog. Um, this is the second LP style guitar that I've got out here. And this thing is um, just awesome with its vented top. You guys have seen me use this before on lots of stuff, but recently Leo actually put uh, his new pickups that he's winding himself in this guitar for me and added a pick card. So it looks a little different than when I got it um, about eight years ago. It originally had Arcane pickups, which sounded great too, but these are really killer, these new ones that, uh, that, that Leo makes. And so he kind of fixed it up and set it up for me and put the pickups in, and I'm, I'm playing this on at least four or five songs in the show. Lake Placid Blue, Sir, Classic Gas, three singles. Um, this guitar comes in really, really handy on songs like uh, Romeo and Juliet by uh, Dire Straits, as well as Burn by Deep Purple, doing the the full, you know, traditional bridge, three single coil thing. I just love playing this guitar. Uh, it's really, really a great guitar. It sounds terrific, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's got a nice bird's eye neck on it. Originally this guitar used to be Peter Frampton's, and um, it had a very, very different neck on it. It was quite wide and flat and it had a rosewood board and kind of matching blue headstock and I opted to get a different neck on it because I found it just for me, my personal taste, it was fairly um, wide and flat. And so this is a more kind of traditional, I'm, I'm not sure the exact neck shape, but I think it might be a 60s C standard is what Sir might call it. And it, it just, uh, this feels really great. It's got the butcher block finish on it and kind of a light bird's eye and it's roasted. Great guitar. This guitar I haven't used for a number of years and I, I felt guilty about it and I thought that's a great guitar and I gotta take it out and use it. This is the prototype for the original um, PT Signature guitar. So this one actually doesn't have my name on it. It's got John Sir's name on the back of the headstock. He signed it. And the only difference between this and my actual signature model is that this one doesn't have pickup rings. Uh, so that was one thing that we added to the production version of this guitar. But this is this was the prototype, really, where you know I had spec'd out a basically a custom guitar, a Sir um, standard, 
with a mahogany neck, rosewood board, mahogany body, maple tops, great binding, all that stuff. And uh, and just because it, it was a guitar that I wanted to get from them. Uh, I had tried a guitar that they make called a Mahogany Deluxe for a little while. It was a flame top, um, but with all the other features basically the same, I think. And I, I really liked the guitar, and it, it, it was really, really cool. But I just wanted kind of a solid color on the top. I didn't want to do the flame thing, so I decided to go for the... You know the red back and the uh, the black top. It's funny because uh, Ian Thornley had a, a similar guitar build around the same time as a modern with a black top, and his had a candy red back and neck. And when he saw that I got this, he said, "Oh yeah, where'd you get that idea for the red back from?" <laughs> but to be honest, also the Gibson Les Pauls with the black tops and the natural backs um, that I see sometimes coming out of the custom shop, um, that was uh, inspiration for the you know, the kind of the natural finish back. I just wanted the red, really. But okay, and we'll give this one to you. It was, it was you, it was you. <laughs> this guitar, I guess, needs no introduction. Who does this remind you of? We're not sure, right? Looks somewhat familiar, doesn't it? Basically using the new Mark VI switcher from Musicom Lab, I'm able to easily AB two amplifiers. So I'm switching between the Bella and the SL68, and that's just kind of, you know, clean, dirty, and then I've got a bunch of pedals there that I can hit in front of the Bella for kind of alternate drive tones, but really that Bella is set up quite clean. I'm running it on, like, high power, and I've got the volume set on about two. Um, so... And it's, you know, 44 watts, so it's, it's actually pretty loud even right there. But the bright switch in the middle setting, which is the first bright position, which just sounds awesome with pedals. Um, it's, it's so nice to have a three-position bright either off or two different bright settings to kind of dial in with different, different pedals. It makes the pedals respond differently with the different bright settings, but it just sounds great, this little amp. I'm really enjoying using it for some of the songs on this tour. If we take a look at my pedal board, I'm using the uh, Crazy Tube Circuits Starlight Fuzz, as well as the Unobtainium, which is one side that's like a Klon, and one side that's like a dumbly kind of thing. And these are kind of the main uh, alternate kind of drive pedals that I'm using through that Bella for different drive sounds that aren't straight up rock, and that's what the SL68 does, is the straight up rock. I use the Unit 67 too. Uh, kind of more to kick the SL68 sometimes, actually. It just just got the, in bo boosting a little bit, and the, some of the Range Master style boost kicked in a bit to just kind of kick the front end of the amp and liven it up, it's more harmonics and that kind of thing, and it's a bit more gain, it's really fun. I've got this Boss Low Impedance Volume Pedal running in front of the whole rig um, to do volume into the amps. We're playing a Journey song, we're doing Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> and uh, there's that riff at the beginning, you know, the riff that speeds up and kind of starts low gain and then it, it comes on. You can just sort of feed into the amps with the volume pedal and, you know, just sort of roll it on slowly and then it, it, it really works good for that. So that's the main thing I've got that pedal for actually, but it's just nice to have a 
a volume control kind of in front of the amp. And then I've got another one of those there on the board and that is just going into the Bella and it's coming post all the drive pedals and everything. So if I wanna, you know, control the volume going into the Bella, pedals added for this tour let's see the h90 that's the main one which i'm using a lot and it's awesome so i'm using it for harmonizer as well as spring reverb which is just beautiful in this pedal I'm using it for some delay stuff rotary slow rotary sounds that's great for that and yeah, so it's just coming in really handy and so both of these pedals are in front of the bella only i'm using the sl68 into the boss tae um and Basically, this is a load box and reamp. So I'm able to kind of control the volume of the SL68 as well as add some post distortion or post amp effects. So I'm using it for that. I'm using it to add mainly delay, just for solos and stuff. So really anything, you know, effect wise in the SL68, it's all coming out of this. So just a little bit of reverb, some echo for solos and stuff, and that's about it really. So really, you know, any effecty stuff is coming through the Bella. And then this is just straight up rock tone with some echo, essentially. And that's what I'm doing on this tour. Cabinet is my signature uh, Sur 412. It's got greenbacks on the top and then V30s in the bottom. This is kind of how I'm running the SL68 controls. Um, basically running you know into the high treble input and I've got it cranked up to about you know six and a half or seven sometimes I'll bump this up to here bring it back to here during the show um, and my SL68 John mounted it with a bright switch so that I've got a three position bright basically off like a stock, stock excuse me SL68 or a 100 PF bright cap all the way to the left or a 4700 PF all the way to the right kind of like an early 70s or you know, 69, 70 super lead. Um, and it sounds killer with the bright cap. I'm all about it. So I just really love that on this amp. I use it in the low voltage mode. So I've got, you know, real fancy the way that we've got these labels on here. <laughs> low and high voltage. Um, I use it in the low voltage mode all the time. I just like the sound. The old Eddie Variac thing. It just sounds really good like that. So that's a step down transformer to go from UK 240 to 120 volts. And what I like to do is bring this 20 amp Variac with me. It's been with me since my days with Mr. Cornell. Um, I got it back then to go to Europe. Basically, my reasoning was coming out of the step down, sometimes the voltage can, can read as high as you know 125, 126, 127. And amps don't like that, you know, anywhere from you know five to 10 volts over what they're supposed to be biased for so what i'll do is plug the variac straight into the uh, step down transformer and then this rack here with a power conditioner in it um, has a, a meter on it so then i can change the variac to you know just kind of set the voltage wherever i want it and set it into a safe zone so that all the gear is happy and my amp's happy. All the stuff that's supposed to be running on US 120 is happy. And I'll usually set it a little low, like on the 1415, and just kind of be conservative with it. And then this is a UK 
uh, a spec the Bella that I'm using here so it's plugged straight into 240. 